but it did give me a chance to do something I've been wanting to do for a while which is I played my brand new battery operated toy yeah hey, good morning folks how are we all doing and this is the first ride I've done on the Brian or first proper ride I've done on the Brian in 2023 I've been back for to work on him but I've not actually done a ride out so today's the day I go for a ride out uh, I better do some filming let you know what's been happening but as you will see from the title new stuff so what's new what have I done well excuse all the, the noise there's a lot of traffic about the more observant you will have noticed I'm wearing a new helmet Hey, I bought myself a new lid. It's called a V-CAN, a V331 Dual Sport, or if you prefer, Adventure Lid, depending on your preference. Um, not an expensive lid. I set you back around the £100 mark. But it seems really good quality for the price. I like the look of it, and I like the price. I didn't plan on spending a large amount of money on a helmet I'm going to wear quite often off-road. So chance of it hitting the floor quite high and I didn't want to waste good money on expensive helmet for the smacking some rocks as it were. My budget don't stretch that far anyway. I love these lights, they are so much of a pain. Any roads. You may also notice. Ah, new stickers. Dead push. Thought we'd have new stickers for the new lid. So what's with this V-CAN helmet? Like I say, it cost around 100 quid on whatever you're going for. I got mine from eBay. I don't normally buy helmets off eBay. But I tried on a Viper helmet, which is identical to the V-CAN. So I knew what size I wanted. And I got it right, luckily enough. <laughs> I find it a very comfortable lid. It's got the standard removable, washable liners, you know, padding, etc. Uh, it also comes with a flip down inner visor. Ta-da! Pretty cool, huh? Always useful. There, it's a double D-ring fixture. It's a ratchet strap, which I actually prefer. Each their own, of course. And the one thing I do like about it is this visor. Pop it down, which is quite a tight fit at the moment. And I think I just knocked my camera over the shop. Yeah, this visor has an app, um, what would you call it? A recess, that's what I was trying to think of. It's got a recess in the visor to fit a pin lock. So it comes pin lock ready. Didn't realise it had the recess until after I'd actually bought it. So I'm well chuffed with that. I have ordered the uh, pin lock visor, pin lock insert. That's 35 quid. So it's about a third of the price of the helmet again. So be aware of that. Hopefully that'll be there, there today. Hasn't arrived yet, but maybe no. Um, the other thing I really like about the helmet, one of the things that why I bought it, the aperture at the front, the opening is really, really wide. <coughs> Excuse me. So your peripheral vision, that's side to side for those who don't use big words, <laughs> like me, is really good. And the main reason for that is this helmet has been designed for you to wear goggles with, if you want to. I do on odd occasions wear goggles, not very often. But one of the great things about it is that on the sides, as you may, may not have noticed, oh yeah, where the visor fits, if you take the visor off, it leaves all the mechanism exposed. Well, the helmet comes with two little plastic covers, which obviously go on there to protect the mechanism, keep any dirt out, that sort of thing. They come supply with a helmet. And because of the shape at the back of the helmet, there's like a whole area where your goggle strap would fit comfortably and it's less likely to move around. So they've really been well thought out, these helmets, in all fairness. And a lot of these features you don't normally get on what you could class as a budget helmet. Like the, um, the recess in the visor, you wouldn't normally get that unless you're talking quite an expensive helmet. So quite pleased with this. It's the first time I've worn it. 
so I'm still learning the helmet. Uh, installing the microphones for my cameras was not easy, I can't must admit. Uh, normally on the tin piece here, you find inside there's slots cut in the, the mouldings, etc. for air vents. But well, this didn't have any, unfortunately. Because that's normally where I fit my microphones in, those little slots out the way. But this one hasn't got any, so I've had to tuck the microphone into the side of my helmet. We'll have to wait and see what the footage and audio is like when, when I get home. Because obviously I haven't tested it properly yet. Um, I didn't notice when I was setting up the helmet any signs of cutouts or anything for headphones. So installing a intercom system may be difficult. Just so you're aware. Oh, hiya. Quick addition to the video. Uh, since I got home, I've checked the new helmet and I've discovered not only is the peak adjustable, took a bit of doing, there's a, a screw on the top and two on the sides are really, really tight, but you can adjust the peak forward, which helps your sunglare. But I also found inside there's a label with a date of manufacture, which is a good thing. I've never seen that before in other helmets, so that helps you know exactly when it was actually made, because of course there's the don't use them, uh, you know, replace your helmet every three, five years, whatever it is they say these days. But how long was it sat on the shelf before they sold it to you? Hmm? Well, mine's actually got a date of manufacture stamped inside it on the label. And it's got the ACU gold sticker thingy on the back, which apparently makes it track league or whatever. Just a little addition to the, the video I'm making. So anyway, I'll leave you back to the old the video you're watching. Thanks a lot. Toodles. Okie dokie. All fueled up and raring to go. Another day of adventures. So what was I babbling on about? Oh yeah, the helmet. Yeah, the back of the helmet is quite high. Um, which, although drafty, as I say, if you wear a neck brace for off-roading, etc., it'll give you more freedom of movement. Which is always a good thing. Going out windy today. I hope the audio is okay because, like I said, I haven't tested it yet. It's the first test run. So we'll wait and see. Uh, let's go this way. I just think what I want to do then. As I said, I've just been out to m to pick up a set of brake pads. Um, didn't realise how bad my front brake pads were, to be honest, which is my fault for not checking. I did some work on the bike yesterday, which included replacing the chain of sprockets, which I'll get into in a minute. And I thought, right, well, while we're here, we've got the back wheel off, front wheel, take off, clean grease the front wheel bearings, check all steering head bearings, etc. Because I do use the bike off-road, of sorts, and I go through an awful lot of puddles. And of course I ride all year round, in winter and such like. So rather than take chances, I've had clean and re-grease the bearings, I've already done the suspension linkages a couple of weeks ago. We'll get all that done out of the way. Then I know it's okay for another couple of months or whatever. Which is exactly what I did, and while I was at it I discovered my brake pads were extremely low. So, asked Mrs Grump, she said yeah I'll see what I can do, and fair dues to her. She phoned me the first thing this morning and said, your pads are here, come and get them, which I just did. So, jolly mad, let's do brake pads to go in the bike when I get home. Now, as I say, yesterday I fitted a brand new chain of sprocket set. Bit of a story to that, but it did give me a chance to do something I've been wanting to do for a while. Which is... I played my brand new battery operated toy. Yeah. Yeah, it's an impact wrench, cordless impact wrench I bought specifically for things like undoing front sprocket nuts. And I'm glad I did because I wouldn't have done the job without it. Bought it off eBay, not an expensive one, works brilliantly. Cordless impact wrench, worth its weight in gold, in all fairness. Yeah, I fitted new chain of sprockets to the Brian yesterday. I eventually bought a JK sprocket kit 
front and rear sprocket, standard sizing. I didn't go for the 16 tooth front sprocket, a lot of people do. I stuck with, well, I think it's 15 front, 38 rear, whatever the stock is, that's what I've stuck with. I've not bothered messing with the sizes. Quite frankly, I didn't see the point for me. But uh, that was a bit of a story in itself, trying to get all the chain and sprocket kit. I asked Mrs Grumps to have a look into it and she had absolute murder trying to find one. Yes, we can get Royal Enfield ones, same as I could off eBay. Uh, on eBay they were about 90 quid, but you had a, a three to four week wait for them to arrive. And to be honest, I couldn't wait that long. Mrs Grumps could get me one same sort of time scale I said well have a look for a DID chain <coughs> excuse me and different sprockets but she had absolute murder trying to find them the, the issue being that the manufacturers supply part numbers not specifications as to which bikes they fit to so unless she knew exactly what the part number was for my particular chain she couldn't get it wonderful system real helpful I tried um, Hitchcock's and quite frankly they were ridiculous, they wanted not far off £200 for a chain of sprocket kit. It was a DID chain, but 200 quid for a chain of sprocket kit for Himalayan, come on that's taking a mickey. Cooper B was suggested, I did phone them and at the time they said uh, they'd get me Himalayan, a uh, Royal Enfield set, which I didn't want, but again it's three to four week wait. I said about DID or other chains, they said, well, we'd have to look into it and get back to you. So I said, oh, don't worry about it, mate. <laughs> to be honest, I was getting a bit desperate for chain of sprocket, so I went eBay, got a JT chain of sprocket kit. I said, about 108 quid off eBay. I had to wait about four days for it to arrive with the postal strikes and all that rubbish. Better than four weeks, anyway. Uh, the other thing I fitted was a extension foot plate, where you want to call it, for the side stand. Basically, most of you will know that the side stands are quite small, the foot on them. So I fit an extension plate. I had one on here before. Another one I bought off eBay was a cheapy thing and it didn't work very well, to be honest. It didn't fit very well, but it did for the time being. Well, I found another one. Can't remember the price. It wasn't expensive. It was 16, 17 quid, something like that. I'll stick a photo up. Um, yeah, that was the extension plate I, I fitted to the Himalayan. It's only when you park the bike on softer ground, it helps to stop the side stand sinking into the mud. Though obviously if it's deep mud or deep sand, it's going to sink, no matter what you do. But it was worth a try to improve things slightly. Right, put around here. Let's see if it pulls out on me. No one for a change, that's a novelty. Yeah, so those are the new bits I fitted. So I kind of pleased about that. Well folks, we're back to Norman. Back to making videos when I got a chance, which at the moment is not very often I'm afraid. The weather has been absolutely pants lately. We've had nothing but rain and it's been real torrential heavy rain. So I don't go out filming when it's that bad, because there's no point. Apart from the risk to the cameras that they could end up getting damaged with the rain getting in. Um, the other issue of course is that you just get rain spots on the lens, it's pointless. I will attempt to do as many videos and as much filming as possible when I get a chance, when the weather improves. So uh, if there's a bit of a lack of content on the channel, apologies, but there's not a lot I can do about it right now. It's just circumstances. Weather, work, etc. The usual. Uh, we shall see what happens. Anyway folks, I think I've babbled enough. So I'm going to call it a day now. Good, thank you very much. 
man I shall do my customary ending which if you're new to the channel you get used to this I do it every time I, I try to remember to do it every time because when I didn't I got in trouble with Mrs Grumps look back through my videos you'll see one where it says I'm in trouble with Mrs Grumps and explanations in there yeah what I do every time is I will say thank you so much for watching really appreciate it like share subscribe all the usual and of course most importantly please be safe ride safe and have fun and this is a bit which Mrs Grumps loves and I'm gonna do it today especially because it is her birthday so happy birthday Mrs Grumps toodles yeah she likes that bit so I got to put it in I get into trouble <laughs>